we're live. <laughs> so hey everyone, today I am here with uh, my very good friend Jen Friedman from New York City. I'm super excited that she's here with me. She is an inspiration. Jen is a singer, she's a songwriter, she's a writer, she is an author of a published book. Um, and so many more things. Um, an eating disorder advocate, YouTube superstar. Um, so, so I'm so excited that she's here with me today. Thank you, Jen, for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Anne Sophie. Great to be here. Yeah, and um, so for everyone who doesn't know you yet, can you just share a little bit about who you are, what you're all about, anything you would like to share? Sure. Um, so I'm Jen, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, um, I am a musician, a writer, um, an eating disorder recovery advocate, and um, I, I really dedicate a lot of my life right now to toward advocating um, for recovery. And I do that, I, I do a lot of that through my music, um, I, I do a lot of it through my writing, and um, I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm all about connecting with people over um, spreading hope and spreading the recovery message, and so that's that's really what I'm what I'm all about right now. Um, yeah. How did you? How long have you been doing the advocate advocate advocacy things? That word. How long have you been an advocate? That's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, well, it it really started. It started. Um, after my kind of my after my first go at treatment um, at recovery treatment, I decided to start a um, Facebook group, which was um, eating disorder awareness, which is Inc. But Robin Hussa Farrell, but. Um, I, I wanted to. I knew. I knew then that I wanted to start. I, I even knew while I was in treatment that I wanted to do something when I got out of it to really help um, help people feel less alone, help people feel more connected. Because so much of it for me stemmed from feeling isolated and ashamed, and and all I wanted to do was um, instill that message, instill the message in others that they didn't have to feel that way, that there was no reason to feel ashamed. So it. Kind of um, that feeling of, of wanting to do that kind of planted the seed. Um, that it it didn't really take because um, I I relapsed a few years later and and but after that time in treatment I really like once I was solid in my recovery I, I said I'm I'm really gonna do this now so I started making videos with the We Are Freedom Freedom Fighters channel and that was in. That that was in in I think that was in July of of, of 2011. So um, so since then I've been doing it um, on in a, on a solid basis. Yeah. So yeah. but you've been at it for a long time then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's become such an ingrained part of my life and an ingrained part of my identity, which is so the opposite of how it, it was when I was in the eating disorder and how I so want it seemed to want that to be my identity and how it's it's just amazing how it's turned around how I now associate myself with the empowerment of recovery and how I seek out others who are doing similar things and it's just it's a very um, reinforcing um, place to be in my life yeah absolutely and I mean there's so so much light I want to say in you know sharing what you've been through and sharing the hope you know that there is a way out of an eating disorder or several eating disorders even and um, that you can live a good life and that you can thrive even if you've struggled for a very long time absolutely absolutely even if you thought that there was no hope for you or you thought that you know you were like the exception and or you know even if you didn't, don't think that you're um, feeling very willing, or that you don't even know if you really want recovery, you can still have it. To you can still fully recover. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you just published an album. You just published your book. Can you share a bit about both both of these projects? Absolutely. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, I knew for a long time that I wanted to write something but I, I I love thinking in visuals I love thinking in kind of abstract terms and 
I, I I always tend to think in, in metaphor anyway when I'm trying to explain something. So I decided to write a book that equated different aspects of the eating disorder struggle and journey through various metaphors, um, such as um, walking on a wire. Well, the project is called Eating Disorders on the Wire, Music and Metaphor as Pathways to Recovery. And it's it's actually a music and book project, and each chapter has a corresponding song. And um, so, so yeah, the metaphors are wire walking. They're you know um, cocoons, water garden, um, being in a courtroom. You know, it, it really takes different themes and different aspects of the struggle and the journey and recovery, and really ties them to um, to certain metaphors, just as as really universal connecting points to help people feel less alone and to also help people who are trying to find understanding if, if they don't understand you know they could probably derive some understanding from from reading the book and maybe in that way understand their loved ones a little bit better um, so yeah it's, it's a metaphorical journey based on my recovery but really it applies to anybody's recovery or anybody's journey and um, and it's a and it's a musical journey as well uh, awesome. So, who do you, who would you say is the book for? Is it for those who are in recovery, or for those who are thinking about it, or for those who, you know, consider themselves recovered, or for family? What's you know, what's your, what's your aim with the book? Um, I think the book applies to anyone at any stage in recovery, e even if that person is fundamentally um, declaring themselves. Um, and, and just immune to recovery. I, I still think this book is for that person. This is I, I wrote this book thinking about the things that I could have benefited from hearing when I was in a place of declared sickness. And you know, I was thinking, what would have reached me? And this book would have reached me, or something like this would have reached me. So I, I wrote it with that in mind, but at the same time, it could definitely apply to anybody along any part of the spectrum um, and also people who struggle with other kinds of addictions or illnesses or or urges or things like that and and and, and people who don't and just want a, an interesting story an intriguing story and and you know um, music to enjoy so you know and people who want like I was saying earlier people who want to understand like families loved ones, even, you know, educators, you know, um, professionals. I really think that this has a potential for very um, broad um, readership, uh, you know, and, and, and all like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for sure. And um, one of the interesting things about this project is that it was funded through Kickstarter, right? Yeah, well, actually, I, I was just going to say I forgot to mention earlier, it's... Um, it's it's I'm working with um, a, a publisher HTFK Press and the the record label is Personal Bias Records um, and yeah and it was and we together we um, we put on a, a, a we held a Kickstarter campaign to raise additional funds so yeah 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 which was amazing um, we I I was blown away by the faith that people expressed in this project um, and it was. Yeah, it was just such a thrill every time somebody donated and uh, somebody pledged. It was like it really reinforced my own belief in the project, and it, it reinforced my um, just my desire to get it out there and connect with people. So, thank you if you're watching this and you pledged. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. You have made this a reality. So, or you have definitely been a big part of making this a reality. So, thank you. Amazing. Um, how did music um, help you throughout, you know, the this this journey of self-loathing and um, being eating disordered? Sure. Um, well, I've I've I'm happy to say I've been a musician long before I have, you know, I had an eating disorder. So it was always something that I went to. It was always like a friend, it was always something I used for catharsis. And so when I developed an eating disorder, I just shifted it. I used it for that. I just, um, I really relied on it because I, I had an eating disorder at college, or it started at college, and you know, it's a very small, um, it was a very small and tight community, and yet I 
felt so alone with this disorder, and um, I needed music more than ever. Um, eventually, it I ended up losing music to my eating disorder, but thankfully I got it back, um, which is a true blessing. But when when I before I had lost it, I really you know I would just spend hours in the practice rooms at school. Um, I would write songs that I didn't even realize were about the eating disorder, but they were about different different characters that represented different aspects of it that I just needed to, to release. I needed it. It was, um, in, in a way, it, was, it really was at times alternatives to using eating disordered symptoms, you know, um, because it was such a, it, 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 was, it was fulfilling in so many ways. And then to get to perform the music really allowed me to connect with people because I didn't really feel like I could connect with people through talking at the, that point anymore, but I would still perform, and even just knowing what the songs were about to me felt allowed me to feel like I was establishing some connection. And you know, nobody else knew, but it it, it did something for me. So it it helped me through. And then and then later I wrote songs about being further along in recovery and and being recovered and and so yeah music has been right there you know and 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 just the whole symbolism of losing it getting it back i mean that was that was horrible that was like emptiness it was like i was hollow so so i i i it it was i knew i was lucky that i knew i had something to return to i knew i had life to to get back you know when i recovered so it was a real blessing to have that to look forward to Absolutely, and I think that's one of the key things too when you are um, recovering or when you want out, you know, of whatever addiction you have, it is to have something to go back to or to, because it is scary and the process of letting go makes you feel like you're losing yourself. And just having something, even just an outlet like writing, writing songs, playing music, singing, dancing, whatever it is that you, you enjoy, um, for me it was definitely journaling. Mm -hmm. um, it helps you to anchor yourself and to ground yourself and just to, you know, when you feel like everything is falling apart and you are falling apart and you don't recognize yourself, it just helps you to come back to yourself um, right. in many ways. Absolutely. I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. So right now, um, are you considering yourself to be in recovery or recovered? I consider myself to be recovered right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely feel like I have worked a long way toward that point. And I, I just remember at one point thinking that I was justifying why I was still technically in recovery a little too much. I was like, why am I having to think so hard about why I'm not recovered yet? Like, what? <laughs> why don't I just start calling myself that and, and living that? And you know, I really do feel it. I identify with it as it, and and um, I feel free. I mean, that's why being on the the Freedom Fighters, the We Are Freedom Fighters channel, actually helped me see recovery as freedom. So, you know, I, I like to to say that I feel free. Yeah. Can you maybe um, describe how how you know how your life is different now? What makes you feel recovered? What what you know? Um, what are your thoughts doing all day long and, and you know these things that um, we go through when when we are struggling how is it different now oh wow um, food and and just thoughts and urges and behaviors and focus on food it, it's like it's it's like there's just so much more space in my mind now for everything else I mean there's that's not um, it's just not the focus. I mean, it's the focus is just real life, which sometimes can really not be very pleasant. And um, you know, but but that you know, it's it's the day to day stuff, and it's the whatever pain that might come along with that, whatever stress, you know. And I mean, that's the whole other thing is just you know, trying to continually learn how to deal with stress, but. Um, you know, and stay grounded and stay in the moment, but but that's and that's a process for me. But but really, um, it's just it's just going outside and and actually just being able to be outside. I mean, the freedom in that. I mean, I, I mean, I'm telling you that 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 all by itself, stepping out the door and being on the sidewalk and seeing, you know, appreciating the nice weather or looking at a tree or just 
focusing on where I'm going, if I'm going to the train station. Like, I'm, I mean, as opposed to when I was sick and the first thing would be food-oriented and it would just, that was the, the go-to, that was the constant, you know, that's just not there. So it's just everything that's there in place of that and that could run the gamut just from, you know, anything to anything. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes I get really involved in, in thinking really, really, like, uh, passionate, like, goal-oriented thoughts, and, and that's really exciting, and, you know, like, when I have quiet time or time to pass, you know, um, that's where my head might go, or I'll take out something I've been writing and look at it and review it, like, that's where my intense focus goes, you know, and, I mean, I, I, I can't articulate how liberating that is. It, I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I love what you said. It's you know, there's just more space, space yeah. in the heart, space in the mind, just more yeah. space. Yeah, just more space, just more space to live and to to feel and to directly experience life. I mean, there's, I mean, it's crazy because I before I had an eating disorder, I didn't think about that, and and it's like I, I, I didn't realize how much I had to be grateful for, you know, and and I, I can see that now in the absence of 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 that after it was just clogged up for so long and now I see it and I experience it so yeah very grateful yes for sure so I'm sure you know putting out an album writing a book comes with a lot of self-doubt um, at least when I write I always doubt myself so how do you deal with self-doubt in your life how do you how do you manage that um, I <sighs> I definitely I have some friends that I could reach out to to run things by. I see a therapist. Um, I mean, and, and I email her sometimes. Um, I um, I do journal. Um, sometimes I just or I'll I'll log publicly. But um, but sometimes I meditate. I mean, it's it's it's. And sometimes I don't, I don't um, successfully deal with it, but it's it's a learning process. Like sometimes I get very hard on myself, and I'm and I let it linger for too long, and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? You know, it's there's no need for that. So I try to remind myself to let go of guilt whenever I can, and um, let go of the insecurities that just aren't necessary. Um, and and I try to just just see what I'm doing as a process and see it as it's not supposed to be perfect and it's not supposed to be flawless. I mean that's kind of the beauty of recovery is it, it is it's supposed to be a little marred, a little flawed, you know, that's the whole point. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. Yes. I just try to tell myself those things and if I can't tell myself them then I try to hear them from others in, in whatever way. Yeah. And yeah. it's so true. It's never we it's never a straight line, right? It's never perfect. And yeah, yeah we have to learn to learn to deal with that and to live with that for sure. Recovery isn't linear, life isn't linear. So it's Exactly. Yeah. It never will be. And it is for nobody. I mean, um not even the people where you think, you know, oh they have everything and everything always works out for them and everything's always perfect. It's never it's never that way. Right, right, definitely, and and I have to say that recovery and being solid in my recovery has made me want to only be myself, like not want to be anyone else, and I mean, want to have other people, all kinds of people in my life, and relate to them in a very authentic way, and learn from them and love them. But I, I no longer look at another person and say I wish I were her, which is which is really really big for me because I used to do that all the time before my eating disorder I used to do that a lot I used to think that person you know obviously must have it all together oh my god that you know and to really idealize a person and want to yes. be the person and I, I don't do that anymore I only want to be me so it's just a nice feeling too yes yeah, yeah. absolutely so um, I'm all about celebrating life and I'm celebrating where we are what is it that you love most about your life right now I love so 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 much that this project has just come out. It's I mean not just because of the project, but because of the support that has just shown up. I mean, and the community that I have felt surrounding it, and you know, it's just really all making me feel like I'm doing what I feel my heart wants to do, and and that's um, 
um, you know, that that is also very liberating. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, I, I feel like this project is allowing me to be uh, an even better version of my authentic self and just really allowing me to express things in a way that I I so badly yearn, yearn to express them. So the fact that it is that now out and available and I'm now planning um, different kinds of events and engagements and gigs and 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 all that stuff, I mean, I I'm, I have so much hope and, and I'm, I'm so happy um, to, to see it, you know, as a, a real thing. <laughs> it's really a really nice feeling, yeah. It's so like a baby that. being there, right? <laughs> it's definitely, yes, uh-huh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, I actually think I, I wrote a blog entry about that recently, like, I, I don't know what it's like to, you know, to, 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 to um, go through pregnancy and to go through labor and, and have and deliver a baby, but, or have a baby, but I, I can only imagine, it's, it's like nurturing a seed, you know, for, for so long, and then, and then seeing it, it's like, you know, your pride and joy, so. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, throughout this whole process, um, and in general in, in your life, how do you show love to yourself? How do you make sure you take care of yourself? Um, well, I try, well, this is kind of in vain, but I try to get enough sleep. Um, <laughs> I usually do. I, usually, I go to sleep a little too late, but then I end up waking a little too late. So okay. even now. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> not today. I made sure to get up early today. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just really trying to regulate, um, you know, at, at, at basis, you know, the, 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 you know, basic sleep, basic you know, food, basic activity stuff, like real, like real basic stuff. I mean, just try to keep that kind of structure going, and 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 I just, you know, I mean, the the writing really helps. You know, um, journaling really helps. I I also do Reiki, so um, I love that. I mean, that's that's totally something that I rely on that I go to when I really feel like, you know, I'm getting stressed or or even when I'm not getting stressed, when I just want to have an improved um, connection, you know, of, of improve my 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 um, connection to myself, improve my just heighten my vibe, whatever you want to call it, heighten heighten the feelings, heighten the, the the good feelings. So I try to really do Reiki on myself pretty regularly, um, and even when I give it to others, I feel the benefits. So that's something that I have as a regular part of my life, and yeah. Walking in the park, also really nice. Central Park. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, I mean those are, you know, those are some basic things. Yeah, and definitely Reiki. Um, I mean, I just discovered it a few months ago, but it's magical. It mm. is. It is. It's like. Oh my gosh, it's like, it just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't even, think, like, you could sit there and think, like, oh, I can't, this can't possibly feel any better, but then you start to do it, and you start to, you know, get into it, and that you do, you feel, you just feel um, more relaxed and, and, and just happier and, and lighter, and it's just nice, a nice, you know, I do it when I can't sleep sometimes, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's definitely, and I... I always have a hard time relaxing. I'm one of those people. My mind is always, you know, going, 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 crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, but Reiki, for some reason, I, I just I'm like, I can really let go, and I'm always sleeping and falling asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's just so automatically centering, and 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 yeah. It's, it's, I, it's something that I kind of always did, even when I was a kid, and I didn't know I was doing it. And it's just. Um, so, so that's you know that reminds me that it's something that I we all kind of innately have the ability to to do to relax ourselves and and um, as long as we don't get in our own way you know so that's what I try to to avoid doing yes. <laughs> getting getting in my own way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the last question I have is what's one action step that you would encourage the viewers and the listeners to take in order to live their own authentic life. Right. Um, something that really changed my life, actually, for the better, is was practicing gratitude. Um, gratitude on on a daily basis. And for a while, and I I, I 
mean to get to get back to this, but I kept a gratitude journal, mm -hmm. or um, just or just listing like every day, listing the things that I was grateful for, and it really made a difference. It honestly did it like really um, lifted me up. It really made me more aware of all of the things around me to be grateful for. So I I would suggest that like when you're or when you're just going about your day, just notice all of the things that you are grateful for, and they're they're everywhere. I mean, literally everywhere. I mean, I could be grateful for the couch I'm sitting on. If I take a, a minute to just really acknowledge how grateful I am that I have a couch to sit on to support me, and why why am I grateful for it? It's supporting me. I mean, it's it's comfortable. You know, I mean, there. You know, um, it's just it, every you can be grateful for anything. I have a grateful grateful that I have a, a door to walk out of that will take me outside of my building. You know, um, grateful for the person you know in the grocery store who's selling me food, who's doing his job or her job. It's it's there is so much to be grateful for, and I think you could if you either wake up in the morning and make a list of things, or if you take stock at night and just make a list of of the things that you're grateful for that happened to you that day that you noticed. I mean that. That really, honestly, was very was a very powerful shift for me when when I started to consciously practice gratitude and and write it down and focus, you know, on on the things that I was grateful for and truly feel grateful for them. That 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 did a lot for me. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It is a life changer. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I I was definitely one of those people. I always focused on the lack and all the things I did not have and everything mm -hmm. I wanted, but. You know, if you actually take stock, you have so much in your life, and um, there's so much to be grateful for, and it really, really, not only does it lift your mood, but it just helps you in general um, to be more happy and fulfilled, I think. Right, right, yeah. right. Because you really have, there's so much right there. You don't even have to look. Yeah. So it's like an automatic thing. If you're feeling down, like think of one thing that's within your reach in this very second, and you can feel grateful no matter what it is. So, yeah. Well, thank you for relating to that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, great, great tip. So, where can people find you? Um, plug anything you want to plug. Oh. Um, thank you. Um, well, my website is jenfriedman.com, J E N N F R I E D M A N.com. Um, there you can find all the information about the, the book and music project. Eating Disorders on the Wire, Music and Metaphor, it's Pathways to Recovery. Um, you can listen to all of the music there, actually, which I think is just great. Like, it's all there. The whole, whole album is on the website, so you can listen to it. And um, and there you can purchase it if you want to. I mean, there, um, yeah, basically it's all there. And, and um, yeah, I mean, th that's pretty much it for right now. Um, as events come up and as, like, gigs and shows and things like that come up, it'll all be listed on the website. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you again so much. This was amazing. Um, I know that the listeners will take away a lot. I did, for sure. And thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for being a role model, role model and for, you know, changing the world in your very own way. It's oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been such a pleasure. Yeah. And you're great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And um, good luck with everything. You know, continuing um, success with your amazing CD. I love it. And um, Thank yeah. you. Thank okay. you. Thank you All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And um, I will talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye, Jen. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>